August 1st, which is less than a week away, my book, my first book, The Secret of the Anointing, comes out. And I am so excited for you all to read this. I am so excited for what God is going to do in your lives through this book. I have been waiting a year and a half for this moment, and I am so excited that the moment is about to be here. (laughs) And um, today I wanted to talk about the book. I wanted to talk about just things I have learned through writing the book. I wanted to talk about the book in terms of like what my, my prayers that God will do what he will do in your lives through this book. Um, and I also wanted to answer some of your questions. So, um, at some point I'm going to like, after a little bit, I'm going to look at the comments, uh, on Instagram where I can read them and on YouTube where I have them set up to be read right now. Um, so if you have questions pertaining to the book, you can, um, be thinking of those and you can write them in the comments and I will answer them live in a little bit. So the book is called The Secret of the Anointing, Accessing the Power of God to Walk in Miracles. And um, when God was speaking to me about writing a book, uh, it was it was instant that it was not even a question that the first book I would write would be this topic. I I'm an apostle and pastor of Fivefold Church, and um, as the job of an apostle is one of the jobs of the apostle is to teach the body of Christ uh, to be well, a well-rounded and mature believer. Not only teach in one area or one subject, but in all aspects, helping you to grow into a equipped believer spiritually, that spiritually you'd be lacking nothing, that spiritually you would be strong in all the different areas. So that being said, I, I, you know, I teach on so many different topics and there's so many aspects specifically uh, when it comes to this revival that I am passionate and, and uh, have an assignment from God to teach on. But when it came to what should the first book be? It wasn't a question. It was just instantly I knew, instantly God spoke to me. It must be this topic of how to access the anointing. Uh, I was someone who was just, I saw myself as like a normal Christian young woman years ago uh, before I received this calling on my life to be an apostle and to start Fivefold Church uh, at 25 years old, that's when I received this prophecy over my life. I'm 32 now, so it'll be about seven years in September, this coming September. And at that point, I just saw myself as a normal Christian girl. I didn't see myself as anything super special, anything really beyond that. <laughs> um, I had this dream, and I believed it was call from God to be a Christian pop singer-songwriter at the time. And so nowhere in my mind could I ever think of being a minister, let alone an anointed minister, a minister walking in the power of God. That very year that I received the prophecy over my life to be an apostle and that God would use me and many miracles he would do through me. And I was called to reach the nations. This prophecy, um, my eyes had just opened up to the fact that God moved in power. I'd only seen a couple people walk in God's power at that time. And one of them was my now spiritual father, prophet, Dr. Dora Davy, the one who prophesied over me my calling. So nowhere in my mind did I was I thinking that God was going to use me to be an anointed vessel. You would put anointing in me. I never imagined that. I never dreamed that. I never prayed for that. I prayed for revival. I prayed for others to encounter God's power. That was my biggest passion. But I never imagined that God could use me in his anointing, use me um, to, to release miracles to his people. 
I never imagined I would ever cast out a demon. When I first saw demons being cast out for the first time, I never thought like, I wonder if I will do that. <laughs> never, you know. Um, and I received this calling upon my, this. I received this prophecy, and um, here I am, seven years later now. Um, seeing the prophecy has come to pass and seeing the anointing move through my life for the glory of God and seeing God just exceed my any kind of expectation of what that prophecy would look like. Um, and, and I'm seeing so many people be set free by the power of God around the world and encounter him in power and be healed. Um, and What, what burns in my heart so much is for you, is for the body of Christ to receive what I have received. Because though we all have different callings, you know, not everyone has the same calling as me. No one has the exact calling as me. Though we all have different callings, we do have one thing that remains the same um, in terms of what we are all called to do as believers. And that is to be a vessel of God's power. To be a vessel of Jesus in his fullness. And I know that that is, the, that is so true. That it's not just for, um, you know, the bold ones. The bold, charismatic, hyper ones you know, that have a passion to cast out demons or something like that. No, this is a calling for every believer. And I know this because it's what it says in the word. It's what it, it says this in the word. It says, all those who believe these signs shall follow them. They will heal the sick. They will cast out demons. Those are some of the signs it lists. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't list a huge long list. The fact that it lists a short list means that these things are core, these things are vital, these things are central with what it means to be a believer of Jesus. These signs shall follow. They shall heal the sick and they shall cast out demons. The reason that these signs shall follow is because God has chosen to heal and deliver his people through his vessels. This is his way. This is the way that he has designed, he has orchestrated, he has planned out that he would pour out his anointing, his power into vessels, and he would move through the vessels to heal and deliver others. Since that's God's way, God needs his children to be vessels of him to cast out demons, to heal the sick. That's why it says, all who believe these signs shall follow. God wants to see his people healed and he wants to see them delivered and he wants to see them encounter him in power, really meet him, have their eyes open up to how powerful and amazing and full of love he is. And so for that to happen, he needs his children to carry his power, to carry his anointing because that's his way. That's his way. It just simply isn't his way to just show up in like human form, like Jesus that we read in the gospels and just show up and just do the miracles in somebody's room when they cry out. He can do whatever he wants and he can do that sometimes and he does all different things. But when we're talking about his main way, his main way of moving in power and healing and delivering his people, he has one main way and that's by his power he puts in his vessels and he moves through his vessels. So this is why this is vital that we take this seriously. We don't, we don't shrink back to this calling, but we take that calling seriously of these signs shall follow. They shall heal the sick. They shall cast out demons. And so should we, we should get to the point where we read that scripture and we say, I'm not seeing the anointing move in my life. I'm not seeing healing and deliverance happening through me. I and missing something, I humble myself so that I can be a true believer that these signs shall follow after. Also, I want to mention that um, it's not everybody's calling to be casting out demons all day, every day. It's not everybody's calling to be 
doing this kind of ministry on a regular basis and on a large scale, it's not like you should be judging yourself and saying, well, how many demons have I cast out in this month? Oh, I guess I'm not a true believer. I don't mean it like that. Um, but we should, there will be times in life where a person you come in contact with, a family member, a stranger, uh, the lady at the hair salon, uh, people in the workplace where they end up talking to you and they are opening up and they're open to receive Jesus, like a uh, healing and freedom from Jesus. They open up to you about how they have depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, addiction. And you, you tell them, you know, Jesus, he has healed me. He has freed me. I've seen him heal and deliver so many others of depression, of anxiety, of addiction, of this thing you're talking about. And I know he can do that for you. And then he wants to do it for you. He just wants to take it. And so I could pray for you right now. And I believe God would heal you, deliver you. Do you, do you want me to pray for you? Would you like that? Would you like to receive from Jesus right now? And they say yes, and you simply pray for them. You simply command the depression to go. You command healing. You declare healing. And so, so that should be a part of every believer's life. Uh, not that it, it, it should be happening every single day. It should be happening by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It won't happen every day, depending on your calling. But we should be ready for that. We should be ready to pray for somebody we should be ready to have the power of God move through us. Um, and it's not just, the, the anointing is not just for the healing of the sick and the casting out of demons, but God wants everything you do to be full of his power. Uh, you know, all of the work that you do for his kingdom, behind the scenes work, technical work, um, any kind of work, he wants that. He wants that to be, anointed work, anointed work, that, he, that his anointing, his power would be on the work you're doing for him, that every aspect of his work would carry his anointing, would not just be like anybody can do this from the world, this kind of work, but this work is anointed. Maybe it's editing a video. I've done that so many times in my life, so I go to that example. <laughs> but, you know, editing videos, I edited so many videos. But if, you, if the work of your hands can be anointed and the way that it will touch somebody, not just by the anointed vessel in the video, but by how that video was placed together, anointed by God to show his glory, to attract people, to bring people. That's just one example, but you can take that for any kind of, Mecha mechanical, technical, behind the scenes, whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever kind of work for God, God wants it to be anointed. Um, so he wants all of his believers to carry his anointing so that what they do would carry his power. Amen. So um, something that we haven't seen, we haven't seen much anointing by and large in the body of Christ. In today's time, in the generation before us time, in the generation before that time, we have not seen the anointing by and large. And um, when the when anointing, when some uh, levels of anointing have been seen, something we really have not seen is impartation of that of that anointing. Uh, releasing of the anointing, duplication, multiplication of that, of the anointed vessel. And that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Uh, that's the principle of God. That um, when you have, when you are given the grace to be anointed, it is completely for service and it is completely for the kingdom. It is not for your selfish gain and it is definitely not for you to look important or something like that. But it is for strictly for service, to serve God's people. It is strictly for God's will to be done, for God's purposes. That's strictly why you are given the anointing. And we are in a body of Christ and we know that we can not one person can accomplish all of God's work <laughs> for sure. Or not just two or three or four. We we need the body. So um, 
when someone is anointed, they must know that they are called to release what they have been given. Fr freely you have received, freely give. Jesus says, heal the sick, cast out demons, preach the gospel, preach the, that the kingdom of is, is at hand. Freely you have received, freely give. When you are given this grace to be anointed, you must know, you, you have to, you have a mandate to release this to others. And you should have a heart to see them excel in God's work, you know, to see God be glorified through them, the people that you release this to. Um, you should have a heart for what you're doing, the miracles happening through you, that the same thing would happen through others. And, and, and this is what we see from Elijah to Elisha. Eli Elisha receiving actually even double portion from Elijah. So doing even more than what Elijah was doing. But the same anointing, he received that from Elijah. This is what we see with Moses to Joshua. We see um, Paul and his spiritual children, his spiritual son Timothy. We see this releasing of the anointing. So this is how it's supposed to be. Not only is there supposed to be the anointing in the church, but there's supposed to be the anointing in many vessels, in all vessels who have the heart that God can trust. Um, and so this is what we haven't seen for so long is to see the anointing release. The, 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 if you see anointed minister, it's very, it's been very rare to see a spiritual son, a spiritual daughter, really doing similar, at least similar things, at least similar miracles, casting out demons as well. It's rare to see that. Um, and, and this is what's changing in this revival. This is what's changing, is that God is restoring what we see in the Bible, what we see from Elijah to Elisha, what we see from Mo Moses to, to Joshua and Paul to Timothy. God is restoring that now to the body of Christ. He's not only releasing his anointing, like not only releasing it, restoring it to one person, two, three, four, five, uh, to just people, big, big ministers or something. No, he's restoring his anointing to be released to all those who have a heart he can trust with it. Uh, and he's, he's, re he's, releasing the anointing into new vessels, into pure vessels, pure-hearted vessels who have that heart to release, who have that heart that do not have any desire to hold on to what they have, but have that heart to see others walk in what they have and go beyond. Hallelujah. So all of that being said, um, why... God put this so, uh, God directed me to, for this to be the first, the first book, this, the, the secret of the anointing, how to access, accessing the power of God to walk in miracles is God wants you to carry this anointing, not just me, not just a few people. He wants you. He wants all of you to receive this anointing to walk in this anointing, to be truly a vessel of God's power. So uh, these, I, I've learned many secrets. I've learned keys of the keys of the kingdom. As you know, Peter, he was given the keys of the kingdom by Jesus. When, when, he, could, when he saw he could trust Peter, when Peter's eye, spiritual eyes had opened, that he could see who Jesus really was. He knew he could trust the keys of the kingdom with him. And the keys of the kingdom, part of that meaning is revelation. Revelation, deeper revelation. Like um, anybody can read the word of God, but not many, not everyone can have real revelation from the Holy Spirit. Can have real revelation of what the word of God is saying. So there's so much that many in the body of Christ are missing. Uh, there's so much revelation, keys, keys of the kingdom, keys of how to unlock the kingdom of God, how to unlock the power of God to come in your life. 
And um, to receive the anointing, it, it, God already, already wants you to have it. But it's about finding how to get it, like the way to get it. Uh, for many of you, it's your heart's not there, but God wants you to receive it, but it can't receive it now because your heart's not ready. So the keys that you're missing that you will receive, you'll receive in this book, are showing you what you need to do in your heart, the changes you need to make, how what you're doing might not be enough. Your idea of humility is not enough, is not even 5% where you need to go. Keys like this. Um, how the way you speak, you might not think you have a potty mouth. You might think you never swear, but you don't realize the careless words you speak, the occasional gossip that comes, the words of death that you speak that you don't even realize are words of death. The curses you're speaking over yourself or others that you don't even realize you're speaking are actually curses, but they are. And all of these, not having these keys, not having these revelations, not having your eyes open up to like, oh, this is what God wants for me. Oh, this is what humility is. And this is what I need to do. Oh, this is what selflessness looks like. Oh, I need. Oh, this is what loving your enemies looks like? Oh, I've got work to do. I know what to do now. That's what, that's so much of what this, this book has in it is, is releasing these keys of what, you, what you're missing, what you might not have had the revelation of. You read through the word. You read about how you should be, how the fruits of the spirit you should have, uh, how your heart should be, but you're not, really having the revelation that God wants you to have of what his word is saying when it comes to your heart, the purity of your heart. So that's one of the biggest keys. One of the biggest keys of receiving the anointing is, is having to do with your heart. It, it is to have really a pure heart and to know what having a pure heart looks like. Uh, and then for some of you, maybe your heart is, is there. It's, it's so pure and so surrendered. Um, but you have, you've, you've, you, you've, you want to see God's power move in your life, work in your life, but you're not seeing it and you don't know what you're missing. And the fact is, is if, if that's you, you, you are, you may be missing some other kinds of revelation other revelations such as actually how to position yourself to receive the anointing because there's the God has to first see he can entrust you with the anointing by the condition of your heart and test your heart to really see this heart I know I can trust but then number two our eyes must be opened up in the spiritual realm of God's ways of God's ways of how he releases the anointing. It's not as simple. Many t Usually it's not as simple as saying, okay, I'm ready now, God. Release the anointing to me now. And it just like comes to you right there. It comes from the sky or something. <laughs> There's a way. There are ways that we see in the word of God with revelation. Ways that God releases his anointing that when you position yourself in the right place, you'll find him there. You ha it's like there are the inner courts and the outer courts, and you have to know like where to go to find the inner courts. You have to know how to position yourself. So those are some of the secrets that I talk about, some of these revelations um, so I'm so excited. I'm so excited for these secrets to get out. Um, it's been so much on my heart as I shared with you just a little bit ago about how I was just a normal Christian 
woman, young woman. That's how I saw myself. And nobody in their wildest dreams in my life, no one in my life, my friends, my family members and acquaintances, people who just like saw me in passing at churches I went to or something. I'm telling you, I'm pretty positive. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody would think, oh yes, like she will be an anointed vessel of God who God will do miracles through, you know? And, and, and so I see myself as, um, not someone who was like deserving or like worthy or like I, I, I deserve to have this because I've done this and this and this and this. And I don't see that at all. I see myself as like, I don't know what's happening. I, I, wow. I'm just in shock. Like, really God okay I just I'm I just want to be in your will so okay yes Lord I just want to be in your will but me you know um I I I don't I don't see myself as um like higher up or something like this of what I'm trying to say is I, my heart has burned from the beginning for you to receive what I received. My heart has burned for you to understand that you can receive this too. And God wants you to receive this too. My heart has burned for you to understand, like, I didn't feel deserving, you know. I had bad things, not good things I've done in my past. You know, I wasn't perfect, Um I felt like not that much of that great spiritual person. I felt like I didn't, when I, when I was called, I felt like I didn't read the Bible enough. And I, I didn't feel like, I felt far from a perfect Christian or something. I, I, and so I know that a lot of people feel that way. I know a lot of you feel that way. And maybe sometimes the devil even gets to you and just condemns you. Um, but so often it's the pure hearts that that don't have pride and ego that the devil attacks with condemnation lies because the devil like it just is so does not want you to see your heart he doesn't want you to see that he doesn't want you to have confidence he doesn't want you to accept the call when God comes. He wants you to be like, no, I can't do it. I don't have the confidence and I'm not deserving enough. I'm, you got the wrong person for the job. <laughs> that That's what the devil wants. And so um, th then on the other hand, there's like prideful people that are like so ready. They're like so badly wanting to be powerful anointed vessels of God, but they will never be anointed because God can never trust their heart because they're, they're, the, the reason they want to be anointed is for all the wrong reasons. It's for power, it's for uh, success, fame. Maybe for some people, they have gross evil intentions of like getting rich or something, using God's power for evil uh, motives. Um, and they, they care about what people think of them. They want people to, think they're amazing, look amazing and powerful. Um, and many times they're the ones that are like the hungriest f to walk in the anointing. And God can never choose them, never, unless they completely change their heart. So you have these <laughs> two sides. You have those very prideful people that are just hungering so much to receive the anointing and seeing like, yes, I can do this. I was born for this. This is what God's called me to do. And God doesn't want them. I mean, God wants them to change and then he'll think about wanting him, wanting them <laughs> to choose them. <laughs> but pretty much God does not want those people. God wants these people over here. But these people over here, the ones with the pure hearts, the devil strategically attacks um, in a different way because he knows that he, the, the devil knows who God chooses the devil, it's no secret to the devil. The devil's been around for a long time. The devil knows about David, uh, about how he was a man after God's heart. And so 
the devil recognizes pure hearts, recognizes men and women that are after God's hearts. And I'm telling you, he comes in this way strategically after pure hearts with condemnation and, try, and making you think that, that, that you're not doing enough. The spirit of religion, God's not proud of you. You're not reading the Bible enough. You're not praying enough. You're not doing this or this or this or this enough. And then in the same regard, he'll, the devil will uh, uh, make you see other people of God and put them on a pedestal and um, think like, I could never really do anything for God except for just sit here and receive because I am so um, inadequate and uh, uh, not as smart and not as charismatic or something or not as um, uh, good at speaking, what have you, as this person. Um, so I could never do something when God, like God asked me to speak for him. God asked me to speak in front of people. There's no way that's the strategic attack of the devil. So, but those are the people that God wants. <laughs> so my heart has burned for, um, my heart has burned for people to see like the real me, the the real like vulnerable me sharing with you that I really didn't think God would choose me for this. Um, and I'm sharing this because there's, there's people out there who God is choosing. He's choosing to anoint you and you have to be ready to say yes. And you have to be a surrendered heart to do whatever God is asking of you and forget how you feel, forget your feelings, forget all those insecurities you've had for so long, forget all of that and just surrender to God and say yes and receive his anointing so he can deliver and heal his people. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So my heart has burned for people to really know, you know, what I have, you can have too. I, I want you to receive this. Here are the secrets. I have learned the secrets of how to access the anointing. I have learned why, why God, you know, poured out his anointing. Like I've learned, I mean, my spiritual father would share with me. He would share with me certain things like about my heart and things. He, my eyes opened up to see like, oh, this is why, even though I'm so humbled and like, how God, but I, I've received these secrets and keys of, of how it comes. It's not random. It's not luck. It's not, you know, how I am here today, how I am here in the call and with what I am doing, ministering and releasing the anointing. It's not random. It's didn't just happen. It, it, there are keys there are principles in the kingdom of god there are secrets revelation that god wants you to know so you can receive too hallelujah hallelujah and for also the the ones who have pride in their hearts and have the wrong ambitions my heart my prayer my prayer is that they would get this book even for the wrong reason, even for the wrong motive. My prayer is that even people that have jealousy or maybe people that don't like me, haters and enemies, my prayer is that they would pick this up, that they would have curiosity and that God would touch them in his power as they read and that they would change, they would transform. They would really encounter God in power. They'd be delivered. There would be the kindness of God. My prayer is the kindness of God that leads, the kindness of God that leads to repentance would happen, would come in power through this book and touch people <laughs> and that they could receive the anointing. That's my heart. I want everyone, I want my enemies, I want them to fulfill God's purpose for their lives. And I want, that's my, as a prayer of mine, I want God to even use me to help save people, you know, who save people who are sowing bad seeds, sowing hatred and sowing evil things. 
that they're reaping, that they would be transformed and they would even be a vessel of the anointing. I, I pray for, for people like Paul, who used to be Saul, Saul who was persecuting the Christians that Saul's would come from, Saul's transforming to Paul's, walking in powerful anointing, fulfilling their purpose, that that would come, that would happen through this book. Amen. Okay, so I wanted to just, um, just share a little more about the book. I was just thinking about things I wanted to share about it, about the writing process. Um, there was a couple things I wanted to share with you. And then if there's time, I'll, I'll see if there's a couple questions that you have. Okay, so there's one fun fact about this book. I am so blessed to have a publisher chosen books. Publishing is my publisher. And... Um, that's really what set this book in motion. I knew I wanted to write a book and many, many books, um, many books, many books about deliverance, of course, in the future will be coming as well. So many different books God's already put in my heart to write different, uh, different topics. Um, but what got this book into motion, the timing of it really was when, um, the chosen books, they, uh, they reached out to me and said that they, um, it was a, a gentleman that worked from the, from the, uh, from the, at the chosen books. He reached out to me and just said that he was just so touched by my ministry and that he just is watching all the time and is so blessed and touched to see people be delivered. And he has a, a son that I think he's like a teenage son that he would it just show him the videos and t teach him things and it was just leading to just spiritual growth in his in his family and um, so that's that's why he had, he reached out and the company reached out and um, so that happened the like the signing of the contract and everything it actually happened. Uh, like the finalization of everything, it happened right in the midst or like, yeah, in the midst, but in the middle of the most severe attacks I ever had on my life and on my ministry, um, such intense persecution that I never could have imagined happening um, without going into tons of detail. It was just false accusations and big lies made about me and the way God worked in the ministry in my life was it everything happened so fast not um not the 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 the, the whole journey I mean from I was ministering for three and a half years about two times a week uh, at my church Fifold Church three and a half years and um, going through so much from our church starting out at 20 something people around that, not starting out, but the first year we had 20. And then we shrunk down to 15 and 10 and five and two over those three and a half years. And there was so many trials and just that was the time of refining fire uh, where God was preparing me for now, for like the, um, the, the, the fullness of my calling. Well, the beginning of the fullness of my calling. And at that point, I never saw demons manifest or be cast out. We'd see God move in power um, through prophetic ministry as one for the, the big one, but not like big miracles, not like deliverance and healing, m only just like a couple of miracle, couple healing miracles over the time of three and a half years. But so that wasn't suddenly, but the moment that God all of a sudden made the ministry worldwide, I mean, happened so fast. Like I never could have imagined it would happen so fast. I mean, well, especially because we kept getting smaller every year, but even in the beginning when I felt like revival was going to break out immediately, I could not imagine 
everything, the, the suddenly moment, the walls of Jericho falling down would happen so suddenly. I could not imagine that. So it happened so suddenly. And so um, it was hard when the persecution came because with the persecution of like false accusations and lies uh, being said and uh, exposed videos that weren't true, things they had in them and things taken out of context and all that. Um, it was hard. It was especially hard because... I mean, with anointing, with anointing, people are not used to seeing the anointing in the church. Christians aren't. And then at the same time, the way the devil attacks the anointing, people aren't used to seeing. So the evilness that comes, like, it's like in the times of Jesus, the, 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 the godly people were saying the false accusations towards Jesus and wanted his ministry to die. And then, of course, were the ones responsible for killing him, for getting him crucified. But um, it was the godly people that are supposed to be like, yeah, s s right in the front seat to receive from Jesus, the one they've been praying for, the Messiah. You know, they were the ones um, that were saying false accusations. They were the ones doing such evil things. Um, and so anyways, like the body of Christ doesn't, hasn't, I mean, me, I hadn't seen the devils be so evil before, like, and through people and, and that kind of attack. Um, I had never seen it before. So it was especially hard, that persecution, because um, people aren't used to, like, Christians making up things, making up lies or whatever. So it's easy for people to not have discernment. This is just a pure lie. This is just this is jealousy here, you know, it's hard for people to, to have that kind of discernment. And so, um, some people can just listen to the lies. Uh, and so that was hard, especially because the way God lifted every, the way the ministry just became global, uh, viral so fast, it, it meant that I didn't have like a lot of people like, on my side or something or a lot of people in the body of Christ like on my side because um, I was so new and so fresh was part of it that's part of it you know um, so anyways that was just the hardest time ever that I ever had in my life and um, it, I've never had to be so strong because it was a moment that God was calling me to be strong it was a moment for God to call me God, God calling me to um even though it was really hard, stay strong, stay focused, keep going, don't slow down, keep doing what I've called you to do. Uh, and at the same time, love your enemies when it's never been so hard to love enemies. I'm calling you to love your enemies. It was just so many things that were difficult to do at once, right? Um, and all amidst that, you know, I, I had such faith in God. I, I had 100% faith. There was no doubt I had in me that the threats the devil was sending my way would ever come to pass. You know, it was like the threats from the devil were like, I want to stop you. I want to destroy your ministry. I want to destroy your life. Uh, you know, I mean, these were just like threats coming from the devil. And I never believed them even 1%. You know, I never was afraid of them. It was just heavy. Uh, uh, I had full faith in God's promises, 100%. It was just heavy. Um, and something so sweet that God did was it was literally in the midst, in the midst of the hardest times of the persecution, of this persecution, was when this, this finalization, the, the contract was signed to um, work with my publisher and, 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 and write the book. And it was so sweet of God to bring that blessing and to bring this prophetic promise um, in my life at that time. Just, it was so sweet of God to help me to continually see the future, what he had promised me, that no matter the storms that were happening before it, that was making it cloudier to see, <laughs> He shone like a light in the midst of that storm and helped me to see the light at the end of the tunnel, you can say, um, that it didn't matter all that was happening right now. The devil is just a loser. He's going to lose on all of these attacks and 
none of the promises will be hindered. None of the promises will, 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 will not come to pass. They will come to pass, every one of them. So that's um, a fun fact and just uh, giving, I want to give glory to God. And just I am thankful for his goodness of that, of bringing that blessing and that encouragement in the midst of that storm. Um, something also that's really cool, really powerful is that in this book, I have a chapter called um, The Wilderness Process. And um, here I talk about the wilderness. I talk about the, the refining fire time. And I was writing about the persecution I was going through when it was so fresh. And it was amazing as I went back and I recorded the book. I recorded the book. There's going to be an audio book of it coming out. I believe September is what Amazon says. So I believe it's September, early September. Um, as I was reading it back, I was re like reading it and I was just, I, lo I just love that I could write that in the wilderness moment when it was so fresh, when it was, the memories were just right there. So as you read it, you can really, you know, come inside of my heart with um, in the middle of the persecution and how to handle the persecution um, because it's it's sometimes it's easier said than it's like yeah easier said than done when after you've already gone through it you know there's something different when when someone says um you know you can do this but when someone's in the middle of it demonstrating how to do it like in the middle of it that can be really really powerful for you when you're in the midst of persecution I want to encourage you in this book to go back to like uh, mark the chapters you're because the, the the book takes you through a journey it takes you through um like the beginning stages of what you need to do to, to prepare to receive this anointing how God can even give you this anointing and then um it takes you through another process another stage of okay now that you receive the anointing this is what you should expect and um a spoiler alert, there will be a wilderness process. There will be a, uh, a journey God takes you on. You have to go through the process. There ha you have to go through some uncomfortable times for God to refine you so that when you, that, that, so that when the anointing really grows in you and God's really ready to use you in the fullness that he wants to use you, you'll use the anointing perfectly how he wants. You, you won't be using it wrongly or for your for your gain or something like that. So he has to take you through that. Um, so the book takes you through that and the book takes you through, okay, now you're in a new season where God is really launching you and you're calling like how for me, um, I, for, for um, four, and a half, four and a half years from receiving the prophecy to when uh, the ministry uh, went like, reached like globally and, um, viral videos everywhere and just that big growth that happened that was like and when the anointing started coming out of me flowing out to to cast out demons and heal the sick that for me was like the launching like the launching of the calling like the beginning of the fullness so like there's a different season of that uh, it takes you through that season um and it takes you through another season of um now that, okay, now you're there. Now you're there. This is how you release the anointing. This is how you steward it. Uh, this is how you release according to God's will and don't just do whatever. Then there's another part of, another season of maintaining the anointing. Okay, now you, you have it. You're releasing it. But how do you keep it? How, how, how do you stay strong when the devil, I mean, how, how do you keep it and make sure the devil's not coming and trying to and stealing it from you and you lose it so there's so many there, there's there's like everything you need there's there's different aspects different parts of the journey so you should really this should be a book you go back to again and again to refresh yourself um because some of you for some of you it could be a year or two or three or even more years later when you about one of the seasons that you haven't come to yet so uh you should go back and um, refresh yourself and also, um, you know, like, for example, when you're in the wilderness season, to read that chapter and to be built up, to be edified in that season. Another fun fact about this book 
and a lesson I learned through it about writing this book is um, I wrote this book in the busiest time of my entire life when I couldn't imagine I could possibly ever write a book. It's like, it would be laughable for me if like, you know, years prior I could see <laughs> what was gonna happen, like when I would be writing the book, it would be laughable. It just would seem so impossible. Um, I wrote the book when I started traveling internationally. I started writing the book. I wrote the, I started writing the book a year and a half ago. I started writing the book in January of um, 2022. And I spent about four months, five months writing it mostly. The writing process actually went really fast, um, mostly because it was in me so much because this is what I, my, my number one passion is in this season, at least it is the number one passion and, um, the number one passion. I mean the, like to teach people about the anointing and the importance of the anointing in the body of Christ, how we need the anointing and my passion also for others to receive this anointing and walk in the anointing and to see the anointing in other churches and other ministries. That's my biggest passion right now. So, um, it was, it was actually, I was amazed by the grace God gave me. It was not difficult to write at all. It was, it just flew. It just straight, like came out of me. And, um, it had been stored in me for that point years. A lot of it, some of it, some of it had been in there for years in my heart. And, um, it was also amazing too, because I, Writing was my more of my strength in like growing up in high, in in school, um, but I haven't done really much since then. So that was cool to see God give me a gift. That well, it was also fun because speaking was something I didn't consider I had a gift in, and that was something like my weakness. And so to be obedient to God. Uh, and to speak for a long time wasn't fun. It wasn't like yay, this is my gift, and I enjoy. This, using this gift, it's not hard for me. No, it was difficult. So this was a, it was a, it was a blessing to now have a, like a gift where it, it didn't feel so uncomfortable, but it felt, it, it came with ease. It came with ease. And, um, I wrote it in the busiest time of my life. So 2022, I started traveling internationally and I literally, um, I was traveling every week, about one or more countries per month. And that's when I wrote the book. And God just, it, it was amazing. It was a stretching time. You know, there's so much more that we can do that we don't realize we can do. God says, all things are possible with me. Meaning there's even more things you can be doing right now that you don't realize you can do. If God called you to do it, there will be grace for it. And one of the ways that God uh, stretches us stretches our faith, stretches us in, in different ways, stretches us spiritually so that we can die more to ourselves and serve God better. One of the big ways he does this is by calling us to do more work works for him that maybe we don't think we can, like it means that we're gonna have to change our schedule. It means we can't have the regular program, regular routine. It means that we really have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Um, and be spiritual. Like for sometimes maybe there's a routine of reading like the Bible for a whole hour or something. And um, if God is saying, you know, I'm calling you to do this work and it's going to mean more like 35, 40 minutes of re the reading the Bible to be just flexible, to be flexible with God um, so that y you really can do everything he's calling you to do. It's going to cause you to be flexible with the Holy Spirit and shift things around according to what he's calling you to. So, um, what I had to do was I had to like, just look at my life and see, okay, where can I write this book? I know it's God's will for me to write it right now. And I literally didn't think I could add anything else. And what God showed me was that when I get on that plane to travel, that there are hours, there are hours there. I'm just sitting there and I could use that time to, to be focused. I mean, to write that book. And so a lot of the book 
is actually where was actually written on a plane, um, and I would be I would be disciplined, and I would just as soon as we took off, I would take the computer out, and I would make sure it was silent. Usually it would be, or I'd put headphones in, and I would write and I would write, and there was such a grace there. I always felt so close to God on planes growing up. And I even remember writing a dream of writing a book someday or having a dream of write a vision, like a, a vision. This was many years ago before I knew my calling. I was actually on a plane. And um, it was a blessing. It was just this place of uninterrupted, un- uninterrupted time and being in a beautiful place, looking outside and seeing the clouds and the beautiful sky and being with God and getting revelation from him and writing the book. So, so much of it was done there on the plane, and it was done, I think, I think I wrote the whole book when I was only home maybe one week. The rest of the time, I was traveling and ministering as I wrote it. So, I got to see God's grace in a new way. I, I was amazed myself at how there's more, like, there's more even you can do for God if he's calling you to do more. Really, there can be. It, it, it caused more surrender. It causes more discipline and selflessness. And but it, it's worth it. It was it was amazing. Lastly, I want to just end on some advice for all of you. So this live, I go live about once a week. I'm going to be going live next week as well, and I'm going to be announcing when I'm going to go live next week. Next week it'll be a Zoom. Um, it will be at the 12 p.m. time. It will probably be. Um, It'll probably be Wednesday, but um, I will announce that Sunday, okay? Uh, But this is the last time I'll be live with you like this. We'll also be together at Firefield Church on Sunday. But like this, this kind of live, this is the last time until the book comes out on August 1st. So um, I wanted to give you some advice, all of you some advice before you read the book. Uh, Just advice as you read it, what you should do. And um, my advice is to empty yourself out and come humble and come with an open heart. Uh, Meaning, I mean, come so reverent. Come like, if you've seen, I know there's a whole uh, big, big span of, people watching right now, whether some of you are planted at Firefold Church, some of you never miss a live, and some of you, maybe it's your first time watching, but I just want to say, if you have seen the anointing in my ministry, maybe it's the testimonies, maybe just seeing the look on someone's face after they're set free, and if you've just seen it, and if, and especially like if you've seen a difference, if you've seen a difference in the simplicity of how God moves in power, um, without st- much st- physical, any physical struggle or f- effort, but just God's power doing the work. If you've been captivated by that, if you've um, seen that and, you know, hungered for that in your life, to see God use you in power, to see just that precious anointing really alive in your life, because that anointing is Jesus himself. God wants that precious anointing in your life too, not just to be like in a church or just to be seen casting out demons through a minister, but he wants that anointing himself who comes in power in your life, in your moving in your life, touching every aspect of your life and in you, within you as a vessel to release to others. God wants that for you. So if you've been captivated, if you've been touched, if you've desired, hungered what you've seen to see that in your life, let me be your teacher like Apostle Paul. You know, come with this open heart of God is going to be speaking through this book. God's going to be speaking through through me, through Apostle Catherine, in this book. And come with that heart of, these words are from God. I'm valuing these words. I've tasted and seen. I've seen the fruits of this ministry. And so I am coming with this humble, open heart that these words are from God. And as you read the book, come with that heart. Read 
each word carefully, slowly, meditate on it, and remind yourself this is God speaking. These are really secrets and keys of how to access the anointing. Because I'm telling you, I believe, I believe with all my heart that if you follow the instructions, if you really grab these secrets, these keys, and apply them in your life, I believe you will see the anointing working in your life after you read this book, as you read this book, and there is power of God in this book. There is power of God in the words. And so there's going to be miracles that are happening as you read the book. It's going to be just the same as watching the live and receiving the words, the anointed words coming, coming at you through the, the screen. It's going to be just like being there in person and the words coming at you and the anointing on the words touching. Just like so many times, I just... Two weeks ago in Houston, I was just preaching and I was just reading a scripture actually, but I was just reading a scripture about someone being delivered from a demon, a little boy. And all of a sudden, demons scream out of this lady. And then I stopped the message for a bit, brought her up and commanded the demon to go and God freed her. God set her free. Um, but like there was anointing on the words. There was anointing on the words and that anointing literally hit her and hit the demons in her and caused this massive transformation in her life for her to be delivered just by her positioning herself to receive the anointing that came through the words. And so reading this book is a way of positioning yourself where the anointing is. And so as you read, these words are going to be, the anointing is going to be coming through these words at you and touching you. And there's going to be impartation that takes place through this book. There's going, to, you're going to, there's going to be many of you that will start to see the anointing start flowing through you after you read this book and in the middle of reading this book. In Matthew twenty-two fourteen, 14, it says, Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. God is calling many people, like actually all of his children in the body of Christ. He is calling many, 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 many to, to come to the inner courts to receive his precious anointing. To be this chosen vessel, like how David was a chosen one. Peter was a chosen one. Paul was a chosen one. Moses was a chosen one. Elijah, Elisha, they were chosen ones. Joshua, Caleb, they were chosen ones. The, all the disciples, they were chosen ones. So those are the chosen ones we're talking about. Many are called, few are chosen. So God is calling many to receive this anointing. But few will do what is necessary for God to want to choose them. Few will do what is necessary for God to want to choose them. God has requirements in whom he will choose to pour his anointing in. Requirements of the heart. Requirements of surrender to him. Requirements of humility. Requirements of getting rid of all these selfish ambitions. God has those requirements and few people are willing to do that kind of spiritual work, dying to self, to be one that gets God's attention. Where he sees David off in the field and he, David got his attention. He's a man after my heart. He will do whatever I ask him to. That's the meaning of many are called and few are chosen. So um, be a chosen one. This book is a blueprint of how to be a chosen one many are called this is showing you what God is looking for to be a chosen one and what to do when he chooses you what to do how to be one God can trust to put the anointing in and how to properly steward it and maintain it 
when he chooses you and pours the anointing in you. Amen. I want to declare over everyone right now, everyone who reads this book, and there are many of you I know that this book will come like by next week, and I want to declare over all of you, and I, I speak right now that every one of you that reads this book, that your spiritual eyes would open up I declare, I release this anointing upon this book now. That through every word you read, anointing would flow through it and touch you. That with every chapter, you would be transformed. Your spiritual eyes would open up. You would never be the same. You would get new revelation you were missing before. I declare that you would be transformed into a vessel of God whom God can choose, who he can trust. I declare that religious spirits would be gone as you read this book, that any old wineskin you had that was keeping you from receiving the new wine, the anointing, that it would be shed from you as you read this book. And I declare the impartation of anointing would happen as you read this book. That anointing, this anointing I carry, would be imparted to you as you read this book in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May millions across the world s read this book, be drawn to it, and may the anointing move upon it to draw people who don't even know what the anointing is, and may they be delivered as they read the book. May they encounter God's power as they read the book. May vessels all around the world, vessels of God who lack the anointing, may they walk in the anointing as they read this book. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I really believe, I, I believe the world is going to transform. I believe it. This is revivals now and God is transforming his bride and God is restoring his anointing in the body of Christ. And I believe, I believe that this is a big part of how God is going to do that. That through this book around the world, that people throughout different countries all around the world, and they will start walking in the anointing. Revival will start breaking out all over the world as people receive these secrets, these keys and receive the anointing. I'm so excited. Thank you, Jesus.